This is part two of a video series about NZG's Liebherr LTM11200 mobile crane model and it's about details and features. In the first part of this video series the model was assembled including the lattice mast jib and now we'll look at the details. Starting underneath the carrier the chassis is very good with all of the transmission components modelled and various other details such as the suspension and various tanks are included too. Pretty well all the component parts are metal and the tyres also have a good tread pattern. At the front the cab has mirrors, beacon lights and wipers and it's good to see that the number plate is included. The wheels are really good with different hubs for driven and non-driven axles and the tyres are especially good because they have the Michelin brand in the sidewall. At the rear of the carrier there are nice ladder details together with lights and again a number plate. The interior of the cabs is pretty good and the use of small friction rivets means that the look of the model isn't impaired. The metal outrigger beams have good details within the casting and the pistons are smooth so they look authentic. The realistic appearance continues on the top of the crane with good looking handrails and walking surfaces. At the rear the individual ballast pieces are decorated well with graphics. One small weakness of the model is the plastic cylinder jackets which are slightly off colour to the metal parts. However the guy ropes are really good because they're made of soft metal and so they can be made to hang realistically. At the boom top there are plenty of details in the casting and the pulleys used on the model are all metal and free rolling. There's also a cable spooling drum and more use of unobtrusive friction rivets. The metal boom sections are all very strong although when fully extended the boom scales a little over length and because of the use of die cast metal in each of the telescopic sections it does mean that the final section ends up slightly thin looking. The metal lattice jib sections are made really well with metal pulleys throughout and only the off colour cylinder jackets detract a little. Also included with the model is the heavy lift boom head and it's an all metal part with smoothly rolling pulleys and the large disc rollers are also metal and they can rotate. Three different hooks are provided with the model so we'll take a close look at the largest 320 ton version. Again it's an all metal part with a swivelling hook at the end and all the pulleys are metal so they roll smoothly it's a well engineered piece and there are some tying off points in the middle of the hook. We will start the review of the features with the carrier out on the test track and although it's a big and complicated piece of equipment it does roll really quite well and when you look underneath you see that each of the axles has independent steering so you can set uh, the steering modes in any way that you want on the model which is um, some very good flexibility and also each axle has fully sprung suspension and that's really good. If you set the steering on each of the axles correctly you can get a very realistic steering movement as the carrier traces through an arc correctly. And you can also replicate another steering mode which is crab steering where all of the wheels actually point in the same direction. And with that done the carrier can move in a kind of a sideways movement a little bit like a crab hence crab steering. This is a surprisingly useful steering mode if you want to park your crane at a local supermarket. Another interesting feature of the model is that you can simulate the self unloading of the separately carried boom. There are four separate legs on the boom which can be folded out and then rotated down. And then you can unscrew the pistons just like on the outriggers to lower them and then place them in some small pads that are provided. What this all replicates is the boom being able to lift itself off of the transporter on which it is transported so that it then stands up in the air standing on its pads and then the carrier can drive in underneath so that the boom can be connected to the carrier and then the crane can be fully assembled ready for work. So if you have some suitable transport models you can display the crane in a kind of a convoy uh, travelling to a work site and then you can pose it in the stages of assembly firstly with the boom legs down ready to lift the boom off the transporter then with the boom lifted up the transporter can drive away 
and then the carrier can drive underneath so that the boom can be connected. We'll now look at how the extending telescopic boom works on the model and it's really just a simple matter of pulling out the various boom sections that you want to extend. They all slide very smoothly and in fact they won't actually stay in position because of that uh, smoothness. So there is a locking system and you can see that when you pull a section out a little locking clip comes out and locks the boom sections into place. Now although the instructions don't mention it you can replicate one of the features of the real machine which is to remove the top four sections of telescope. So here you can see I've locked them into place and to remove the top four sections you need to push in on the locking clip and still pull the boom outwards and then you can see it comes free but you've got to remove it very carefully at the end because the locking pin is on a spring and it'll try and jump out and might even come loose if you're not careful and with that you can remove the top four boom sections and then you can see the end and the locking pin. There should be a blanking plate that fits over the open end of the boom and NZG sell that as an accessory. And if you like you can now display the model with the top sections of boom being transported separately. Reinserting the top part of the boom is straightforward, you just have to make sure that that locking pin is facing the right way around so that it clips into place properly. Um, and just depress it and then it will just slide in and then you can see it drops down and will appear uh, in the locking hole. And to close the boom fully up you just push down on that uh, locking pin again and slide the section down inside and then you can drop the whole boom back together. In terms of lifting power one of the options you've got is to use the 150 ton hook on the boom head. Um, you can also use that on the lattice mast and you can also rig up a single line hook block if that's what you want. But if you're interested in heavy lifting you need to rig up the heavy lift boom head and you can fit that over the top of the inner boom sections if you don't feel confident to remove the top sections of telescope. It just gently eases into place and when you've got the holes lined up you can use the tiny brass bolts and the tools that are supplied to make a rigid and strong connection. So with the heavy lift head installed you can reeve up the big 320 ton hook and that's just a matter of patience and following the instructions. The next feature to look at is the Y guy arrangement which is used to stabilize the whole of the boom and jib and give it more strength. With all the connections made you just lift up the Y guy arrangement and then you'll need to tension up the guy ropes and you can do that with a clever little system that exists in the ends of the Y guy arms and it's done just by using a supplied special key which pushes in and disengages the brake and then you can tighten up the Y guy system. And it works pretty well because you can get a significant tension in the system and straighten the boom up. Having got started you just then keep repeating the process of raising the wire guy mechanism and then winding in on the guy ropes to tension it all up. And when you've got it to the position you want it you can then straighten out the silver wire guy ropes and get them to hang in a kind of natural catenary shape. For maximum stability you then spread the two wire guy arms and again retension it all up and you can see here that if you want to extend the telescopic boom you've got to go through a process of extending the boom and letting out the wire guy, guy ropes. Another interesting feature is the operator's cab which can collect him from ground level and then tilt to give him a good view looking up. Another feature that you would expect to operate is that the whole crane can rotate and of course the loads on a model like this can get very significant so it's a good piece of model engineering that the crane does rotate and rotate smoothly. Another feature you have is to set a variable angle on the lattice mast jib and the two cylinders at the top they're very stiff but that means they'll hold any pose you want to set so you can get a decent angle if you want to pose it in a different direction. And of course another feature is that you can work the winch, it's a bit slow by hand and you wouldn't sling a load the way I've shown it here, but the winches do work to raise and lower loads. So that completes the review of the details and features of the base model and the next video in the series reviews an extension jib. The impression this model gives is that Liebherr and NZG have invested to make it a high quality long lasting fitting tribute to the real machine. It's highly detailed, very well engineered with good functionality it's an outstanding model of a heavy crane.